Good afternoon and welcome to Real Talk with Tamara. As you guys come into the room, please hit the like button. Also, if you have not subscribed to the channel, please subscribe to the channel. I hope that you guys are doing okay this evening. I know that I am. I miss you guys. I took me a little break. You know, I had to take me a break on Sunday to uh, rest up, uh, to do some things that I needed to do. Okay. Um, I definitely need had to do some things that I needed to do. Um, but I miss you guys. Okay. Um, today that I want, I wanted to talk. Oh, I always express the uh, importance of hitting the like button. It helps to keep the video on the algorithm. Also, if you have not, um, subscribe, please do hit the subscription button. Okay. Um, I wanted to talk about the truth about the Memphis mayor and police chief and what Memphians really saying about the crime in Memphis. Okay. I got to thinking about, you know, um, and I think I've done videos on this before, right? Um, the Young Dolph's case, okay, has brought a lot of eyes, speculation and things of that nature to uh, to Memphis. And, and, and which, I don't know if it's a bad thing, right? Uh, because I understand the more attention you bring uh, to a situation, uh, the more people are forced to do what is necessary, right? And as far as I'm concerned, I feel like Young Dolph has gotten his case has gotten uh, the attention that that is definitely uh, needed, right? Um, I was looking at a video that I did. If you haven't seen, uh, looked at that video, make sure you go back and look at the video that I did on. Um, uh, T on Orange Mound quit and on um, Cornelius, okay? And when Young Dolph's uh, car, when they was pulling Young Dolph's car, the ATF was out there, um, the alcohol, tobacco, and firearms, okay? That's the feds, right? And I don't know if a lot of people paid that uh, attention that the ATF was on the scene, okay? Um, as I said before, the feds was brought in, the feds was in, in this early on, okay. Um, anyways, <clears throat> so uh, as I was saying, I think another reason why, because Lorenzo Rice case brought a lot of attention to the Memphis area, but I think the reason that Young Dolph's case really, really brings a lot of attention is because people truly want to know uh, um, uh, who I was involved with with the Young Dolph's case, okay. Um, there is a lot of stuff in the atmosphere about the Young Dolph's case, but let me just tell you this. The Memphians absolutely knew 100% uh, who was behind what happened to Young Dolph, okay? Memphians knew what had happened. If they didn't know exactly what happened, they knew the direction, whether they said anything or not. As I said early on when Young Dolph was assassinated, um, people who tried to put the truth out there um, was uh, being threatened. Um, people were being killed and things of that nature on the streets. Uh, people, they just got really reckless um, because they was trying to figure out how the police was on their ass like they was. They felt like somebody of somebody that knew somebody had to be talking. Well, the truth of the matter is they 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 told on themselves, right? A lot of those uh, deleted, me those messages that they thought was deleted told on them, right? Um, so that's why you hear the prosecutor say, Two of the people that did it sitting right in there because they know what they know and they got what they got, right? But the police chief, you know, she she's the police chief. I, I've done videos on this before. The police chief is over the city of Memphis, right? You have the city of Memphis and then you have Shelby County, right? So you have a government in the city of Memphis and you have a government in Shelby County, although Memphis sits in Shelby County, right? And so the Memphis police chief uh, is appointed by the mayor and she, um, she, her officers patrol within the city of Memphis, right? Patrols within all, covers all of the city of Memphis, although it sits in Shelby County. Now, there is a a, a a county line when you start going out into the county, although um, the county is, is Shelby County, Memphis sits in Shelby County. There are other cities that sit in Shelby County, like Millington and all of that, 
that the city of Memphis do not patrol. That's what the deputy sheriffs patrol, right? Okay. And so um, when she was when she was brought to the city of Memphis, uh, a, a lot of people was upset. Okay. Uh, not because they had anything against Chief Davis, you know, because she's been extremely, um, I'll say coy, you know what I mean? We haven't seen Chief Davis do any interviews a whole lot. And, and I think it's because Jim Strickland, that is the mayor at this point, is against that. You know, he he does not do a whole lot of interviews, right? And um, like I said, we, we, you know, a lot of Memphians was upset because they knew something was 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 going on when um he was interviewing for the um police um director the posi oh the old name of the position and has always been has been called the police director and so when uh chief davis got there she asked uh the mayor if he would change the name from police director to police chief okay i'm sure it you know he he honored that for her and then why i don't know but i'm sure it'll be changed back to director when she goes okay but a lot of people knew it was mess in the game because she did not apply for for the position. And um, a lot of Memphians understand, you know, I was talking to a friend of mine the other night uh, that that's really out there on the pavements. He and he and a lot of the young activists, um, a, a lot of the young people have a lot of respect for them because they used to be on the other side of the law. OK, and now they're out there. They was really out there deep for Tyree Nichols and. Um, I was looking at their pages and things of that nature, and they were out there in front of City Hall because if you're from Memphis, you know where the issue comes from, right? And he and I was kind of talking about some stuff as it relates to that because the Tyree Nichols case received a lot of media attention, and his even he's an activist. I mean, it, we saw him um out there um on the news a lot but he does not do it for that they truly have their heart in doing this that's why when they call me and they go tam can you it's getting ready to be an election can you can you set up something with um some of these people that are that's in the race so that we can come over to your office and, and vet them and, and talk to them to see what they what, what they are about i'm all about that you know what I mean? I, I do it instantly because these are the young, younger leaders. You know what I mean? That's really out there that can go into these hoods and these young boys really do uh, respect them. They're able to touch them because they're the OGs now. They're the OGs that's really out there uh, pro being proactive. OK. And so with Chief Davis. You know, uh, everybody in Memphis know that Chief Davis is not running anything, right? And I know some people, you know, try to say, well, you know, it's it's like I'm talking about people of other races, not people that don't know anything about Memphis, okay, and the government. Um, well, maybe you're trying to put everything at the feet of, um, of, of, of Jim Strickland because he's a white guy. No, I'm just I'm just telling you how it is. We know that it, we've heard, you know, we've heard other people talk about it. We know that Jim Jim Strickland brought in somebody that he would be able to control. Now, I don't have anything against Chief Davis, but as a African American woman, um, and I know, you know, is I can't tell her what to do, but I think as another African American woman, rather than take a job to just be a figurehead, I, I feel like at least you should have more pride than that, right? And so that's why a lot of Memphians, we started seeing Jim Strickland more out than anything. He didn't even really come out when young Dolph was assassinated, but he definitely uh, came out when this Tyree Nichols situation had happened, right? He definitely came out when this Tyrese, uh, Tyree Nichols situation had happened because the leaders and activists within Memphis went straight to City Hall and was standing out in front of City Hall protesting because they knew exactly what the problem was. The problem ain't, ain't Chief Davis, okay? Because Chief Davis knows nothing about Memphis. Chief Davis can are, is not making decisions. Let's just be real about it, okay? Chief Davis has to meet with Mayor uh, Jim Strickland every day, and he tells her what to do, which is why he brought her in, because he knew she knew nothing about Memphis. Uh, he wanted somebody uh, that he felt like was media friendly and that would be easy to control. 
a lot of people was upset because they wanted for Sam Hines to be the police chief. They could not believe that he would pass up a police chief that had 30 plus years on, born and raised in Memphis, okay? I knew Sam Hines when I worked for the Memphis Police Department when he was a sergeant in robbery. And then, you know, he was our instructor when I was going through the uh, Memphis Police Academy. OK, so he's military. Sam Hines knows the city and he had worked up under Mike Rollins. OK, Mike Rollins and I are very, very close friends. OK, he had worked up under him. So he 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 already knew Mike brought him um, when he right before he left you know, and, uh, and put Hines, uh, put Sam right there because I believe that Mike was wanting for Sam to, um, you know, he was he hoping that a lot of the ones that had worked their way up the rank through the years, right. Um, you know, would, would be next to be the police director instead the pat white power brokers and though when i say white power brokers those that's that long money that old long money within tennessee that funds the mayor they fund his campaign and things of that nature which means he has to do what they say you know wanted somebody a female black from out of town that they could control that knew nothing about the city of memphis right and that's exactly what Mayor Jim Strickland pulled, right? Because crime pays. You have to think about this stuff has been engineered. Mayor Jim Strickland was a uh, he was a um, city council. When he was city council, he started voting and doing things that was hurting the city even then, which is what, what why people were surprised when they allowed him to finesse them into um um, um, he finessed the, what he did was he went to the, to the black preachers with the bigger churches and they finessed their people into, um, voting for him. I, I never voted for him. Jim Strickland is an okay person. He, you know, he has a cool personality. He's been in my studio. I've interviewed him. I asked him the hard questions because the city of the Memphians wanted to know why crime was out of control. What was he planning to do? And I was shocked that he came over there. But he has not done anything um, for the city of Memphis and crime has gotten completely out of control under his watch. But it was engineered and it started when he was OK, when he was city council. OK, and that's one of the reasons why so many people, the city of Memphis is is mad at him, not necessarily Chief Davis. See, a lot of people on the outside of Memphis talk about that Scorpion unit when the thing about it is the school, they have always had task force, okay? And one of the things that Chief Davis did, and which I can't understand, but I guess, you know, hey, with a lot of the chiefs there that have, um, that that came up through the ranks in Memphis, um, what they did, what a lot of those chiefs, okay, they don't say anything, I guess, because they feel like, you know, hey, Chief Davis coming in, she want to change it, but she does not know the structure of the police department or the city. That lady knows nothing about the city, which is why uh, a lot of Memphians was mad. They was protesting when she got to Memphis because they were saying crime is out of control and you go and get somebody that knows nothing about Memphis and you didn't, you don't give an explanation. Right. And um, and so what she did was she dropped the criteria because with the task force, they've always been task force. The task force is still intact. Uh, there have been like, you know, um, gang unit task force, like <clears throat> a lot of the task force always through the years. But here's the thing. You had to have five years or more on except for when you were in vice and narcotic. OK, vice and narcotic always bring new recruits because when they do drug busts or whatever, they're looking for um, <clears throat> they're looking for uh, new faces. As I was telling you, all when I was going through, I was after I had graduated, I was supposed to go to vice and narcotic. OK, they do prostitution things and they always bring new recruits right uh, over there to do that. But other than that, um and that's just the set of things. But other than that, um, a task force like that, they had to have five years or more on. And I think up under her watch, that was one of the criteria that was dropped. Right. And that proved to be a disaster because those people that those officers that were chosen, uh, they had a lot of piss and vinegar in them. 
and it they proved to not only they proved to not have any character at all right because i think it's more of a character thing it's more of a when you can do what those officers did it has a lot to do with with the evilness of that particular person right of those particular people and you know i say you know being that i know the the um chain of command I know that it starts with the sergeant is the first line lieutenant and I mean the first line supervisor and then the lieutenant and then on up because those officers felt comfortable enough to do what they did, right? That would mean that they weren't being heavily supervised by the first line supervisor, which is the sergeant and, and then the lieutenant, right? Because they kind of felt comfortable enough to do the evilness that they did, right? But as far as Chief Davis, Chief Davis was put there to do exactly what the mayor wants her to do, because I believe this is just what I believe. And a lot of other Memphians believe it, too, that the mayor wanted the crime to be out of the, out of control. That's the reason why those people, because, you know, everybody have a different ministry. You have those that stand out there and hold signs. You have those that protest like Frank Gotti and them that's able to get a lot of the younger people together. And then you have those like me, when they call me and say, Tam, can you get the politician over there to your, to your studio? Can you interview this person? We want to come into your studio and talk to them. And I set that up. That's, 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 that's what you do. Everybody have their own ministry, right? Especially when there's, when you care about a city and you want progress, it has degressed because of the politicians down through the years, white and black. Memphis has always been a beautiful city. Memphis used to have a lot going on, like Liberty Land. Like there used to be park amusement, little small amusement parks and stuff for the for the kids. Um, there was always little summer jobs, but it has degressed because the politicians want to hijack. And when you got politicians that are lawyers and things of their nature, things of that nature, what they do is they have their friends that have money and businesses and, and practice law uh, to say, hey, we want to, you know, it will put some money behind you, but, you know, we need for you to do some things to make sure that our pockets are lined. So then they start doing things to make sure that crime is inflated, okay? Because who's making all the money at this point? Nobody but the lawyers, right? So as far as Chief Davis, people know Chief Davis will be gone there's a new mayor's race that's come is that will happen October of this year. Jim Strickland has termed out. He can't run no more. So he won't even be the mayor after October. And I was talking to somebody and they were saying that they think that when she came on, that she signed a five year contract, which means that if a new mayor comes in, they might have to keep her another year or two. But after that, they're definitely going to bring in their own police chief, okay? So her days are really numbered anyways. And what'll happen is if the new mayor comes in, if they don't want her, I mean, they could put so much pressure on her because they don't want to make a resign, okay? They can make a resign or they can go ahead and unappoint her. And if, and with unappointing her, what they have to do is still pay her out of her contract. If they want to bring in their own police director, okay? bad enough they'll do that they'll say she got a year left we're gonna go ahead and pay her on out of this contract okay and um we're gonna go ahead and pay her on out of this contract and um and that's that okay because you know this we want to go okay which every um all of the new uh candidates for the mayor's ra mayor's race in memphis is saying <laughs> they're gonna bring in their own police director okay so chief davis has been a small factor if you want to know what memphians think about chief davis they don't think anything because all of the memphians know that chief davis don't run nothing chief davis strictly do what the mayor and those white power brokers want her to do right and that's why i say as a black woman uh, when people say, how come you don't say nothing about Chief Davis? First of all, I don't have to say nothing I don't want to say. For, second of all, I was born and raised in Memphis. I know the city and I know the structure and I'm I'm in, I'm in in the inside, okay? So I already know that Chief Davis was brought to be a bobblehead, okay? She was brought to be, brought to be a bobblehead. There's certain things 
that especially white power brokers want to do and they want to do it on the watch of black people because they feel like okay we need to put a black person here so that they can't say that we're racist okay and so that's why i say when you start a lot of black people start getting appointed in a lot of these positions okay what they need to do is have more pride and say no i i, I can't take this position if i can't incorporate some things that I want to incorporate that is truly going to be helpful to the citizens and the city, okay? Instead of just taking orders and, and making it appear that you're running something when you're really not running something right, right? But as far as the crime in Memphis, you know, um, like I said, a, a lot of people have always known that it was engineered, okay? A lot of people, all of the Memphians know that it is like this because of the politicians in memphis right because of the politicians in memphis and believe it or not a lot of memphis people truly love uh young Dolph, and you know rather regardless of whether they say something or not them folks is on th this young Dolph's case okay and working the hell out of this young Dolph's case because they know the citizens of memphis is not going to accept anything less than that okay as quiet as it's kept they understand the problem Okay, when young Dolph was killed, everybody already know knew in Memphis what had happened. Which is why you saw when those little young dudes was going live, okay? When they was going live, right? They um um they was tagging the Memphis Police Department and things of that nature because a lot of people on especially on the street already knew what had happened, right? And so I know a lot of people, you know, when they say, well, you know, um, when people go to jail and things happen in the jail for those. But but, you know, it's really this way. It's uniform like this. If you know government all the way across the board. That's the reason why I said the Memphis police chief handles the city of Memphis, the sheriff, which is a completely different government and entity and is not controlled by the, any mayor because he is an elected official. He controls the Shelby County Jail and he controls the county, which are the deputy sheriffs. He has no control. His people can, control, can patrol in the city of Memphis because every county has to have a sheriff. They can say, we're going to get rid of the Memphis Police Department and take it off of the books and that can happen. But every county must have a sheriff, which means the sheriff really has more power than the police chief because she or he is appointed in every city the mayor controls them nobody controls the sheriff but the citizens right because the citizens elect the sheriff right so chief davis has no say over the shelby county jail period she has no say there are no cover-ups there is no nothing okay because she only controls the memphis police department the shelby county sheriff which is floyd bonnet controls the shelby county jail and the deputy sheriffs in the county, okay? All right. So, you know, what people is really saying about the, the mayor, and I said that because I know people that don't know kind of get that mixed up quite a bit, right? You know, um, Chief Davis, you know, whether she's good or not, we don't know. Hell, the Memphians don't know anything about, you know, Chief Davis. Um, because Chief Davis has not, um, she's, she's, I mean, nobody knows anything about her. And, and that's that. Not even the damn officers that, um, that works for the Memphis Police Department, because um, I think that's how the mayor wants it. And even with the officers, you know, they go, you know, we know that Chief Davis knows nothing about the police department. And hey, we, we know that whatever is done, it is by way of the mayor. We know she she strictly does what he says do. And that's her boss. You know, that is her boss. But I mean, you know, I hey, like I said, when a person is put in a position like that, you know, I feel like that it should be a person that at least knows something about the city and that he is able to incorporate something and not just a figurehead, right? And that's exactly what she is. She's a figurehead, right? And so that's the reason why, like I said, a lot of the activists, as far as the Scorpion unit, they was mad at the officers, okay? 
they was mad at the officers and they was mad at the mayor because number one, the mayor brought somebody here that he can control. And I'm willing to bet you, and, and a lot of people already know, um, nothing happens. She does nothing unless he tells her to do it. She's not thinking of anything herself. Okay. Okay. And so that's the reason why people that know go directly after the mayor, because what he's trying to do is hide behind a black woman. Okay. And they do their dirt and kind of keep the city in balance and hiding behind a black woman. Right. But yeah, I just, I wanted to put that into the, I wanted to definitely put that into the atmosphere. You know, Chief Davis is over the Memphis Police Department. Okay. She, and the thing about it is she's just there. Okay. She don't run nothing. She's just there. The mayor has her there. The mayor and the white power brokers is running it. And then whenever something go wrong, it falls on her shoulders. Okay. And the sheriff, Sheriff Bunner, another elected official, he's elected just like the mayor, is over the Shelby County Jail. Okay. And it's over the deputy sheriffs, which patrols the county. Chief Davis don't have nothing to do with the jail, period. Okay. She don't have no control over the jail. No say the Memphis police officers, when they make arrests, they take the, uh, the, 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 they take the suspect and drop her off at the jail and they go, is that's it. Okay. If somebody is let out, it ain't got nothing to do with the Memphis police department. You know, I've heard people say the Memphis police department had let them people this out. Well, no, you might need to learn government. It's the judges, okay? Because once they take them to jail, it's out of their hands. All they could do is arrest them. The Memphis Police Department, all they can do, all a police officer does is enforce the law, okay? According to the law, if, if you break the law, they can arrest you and they take you, drop you off at the jail and they go on. Then you go to court. If you get out, it ain't got nothing to do with the Memphis Police Department. And it's amazing to me how many people don't even know that. The Memphis police had let them back out. They did all this, you know, people go crazy. You know, they believe a lot of people that don't know nothing, right? But that would have to do with the courts. You might need to look at the courts, okay? The Memphis police had gated them a bond. No, Memphis pol the police officer in no state can give anybody a bond. But the um, the judges can. Okay, so that's the reason why I say the judges' race is very, very important too, okay? You know, Chief Davis had let them do that to that person in the jail. No, Chief Davis is over the Memphis Police Department. She has no control over the jail, okay? That would be the sheriff. He runs the Shelby County Jail, and every sheriff in every state runs the jail, okay? Not the correction center because... You talk about a correction center that is controlled by the county mayor, okay, which is elected. See, Memphis has a county mayor and a city mayor, okay. The county mayor controls whatever in the county, but he does not. He controls anything except for where there is an elected official and the sheriff is elected. So he don't control the Shelby County Jail. The sheriff does, okay. But anyways, you guys, I wanted to put that into the atmosphere. I just, you know, I want to talk about that. Y'all know I have to keep y'all abreast of what's going on because a lot of people really want to know um, what's going on in the city of Memphis and how Memphis is feeling about the crime. Memphis feel, you know, as a Memphian myself, and I live on the outskirts now, uh, and, and that's another thing that's hurtful. A lot of people, like when you grow up in the city of Memphis and you're able to 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 you able to buy your home or whatever. You want to live in the city that you grew up in. Cause I love Memphis. I'm in Memphis every single day out in the streets of Memphis. I ain't got on no mask, no nothing. I'm out there. Okay. And I um I had to buy a house on the outskirts in Mississippi. And that's what people are, a lot of people are are having to do because right now. The crime is 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 so out of control, you know. Um, having to go to other little cities outside of Memphis, like Eads and um, you know, other little cities. They even going all the way down as far as like closer to Jackson, Tennessee, which is like an hour and a half away. Cities within little small cities within there to try to get away from this crime because of what the politicians are doing to 
uh, how, how the politicians are hijacking Memphis and really keeping things off balance. So I think that's why it is important, you know, with the, well, you know, I'm happy that we have the activists that we have, um, people that truly care about Memphis. I try to keep as much as I can on my TV show because, see, I'm going to tell you something about the Memphis news. Jeremy Pierre is cool, but they can only, they work with the power brokers. As a matter of fact, the power brokers own the media. So they can only, the, the, the news anchors can only put out there what they are told to put out there. That's why I always say with independent media, it ain't good to bullshit and put all kinds of crap into the atmosphere, lying and stuff, knowing you don't know about something, trying to discredit somebody because you hating on them, okay? All right? It ain't good to do stuff like that because the independent media is really what um, that's not bought and paid for. It's still a lot of independent media that's bought and paid for, Okay? All right. They actually work for, you know, a lot of these record companies. Right. Or they work with a sector or a group where the person that's over it working with the record companies and then they, they do what the person over the sector say do. You know, we got to discredit this person. You know, when uh, my thing is, I feel like it is absolutely imperative to put the truth out there. It is to keep the people abreast. Up. I understand, especially as it relates for the city of Memphis, that that is the only way that the veil of people are going to start opening their eyes to know the truth and to know what to do. Okay. And to know what to do. Right. So I just, I wanted to, to tell people that, you know, um, and I say that because I'm sure just like, it's like that in Memphis, it's like that in every other city. It's like that in every other city and state, you know, um, People kind of get mad and that's kind of, it's smoking mirrors. They'll put somebody in a position and people will get mad at the wrong person. Getting mad at Chief Davis ain't going to change nothing. You know why? Because she don't run nothing. But the good thing about it is a lot of the Memphians know that, that she don't run nothing. They know where the problem comes from. And it comes from that mayor, the city mayor, okay, as it relates to the Memphis Police Department, right? But anyways, you guys, I want you guys to please like, share, and subscribe. I'll be putting out some more, you know, uh, videos today, okay? I'll definitely be putting out some more videos, okay? I'll talk with you guys later.